My name is Bill Maroon. I work in the mechanical engineering department. And uh, I've been asked to do a, uh, a quick, short, uh, informative video uh, that is car related. So for those of you that know me, uh, know that I'm a, a car enthusiast and uh, I've owned a lot of cars, but I've never owned a new car. So that what that means is that most of my cars at some point are in some state of varying disrepair. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the warning lights and things on your dash, and we'll focus particularly on your check engine light. So first thing I recommend is go in your glove box. If you haven't already done this, get your owner's manual out, open it up, find the section on your dashboard, look at what all the warning lights are and what they mean. Because when you're driving down the road and a light comes on and you don't know what it means, that's a little uncomfortable, right? One recommendation would be there's three or four things that I would consider uh, that you got to get off the road if, if there's a warning. So if there's a, a high water temperature, so if you're overheating the engine, you're probably going to need to get off the road as quick as possible. Uh, if your battery's low, there'll be a little icon comes up, looks like a rectangle with a plus and minus on it. Uh, you might not have a lot of time. The engine might shut off because that means the charging system isn't working and the battery voltage is getting low. So you want to get off the road there too as well. And, uh, and the third thing would be an oil pressure warning. So uh, if you get an oil pressure warning on your dash, uh, th that means that the oiling system that lubricates all the moving parts is not working properly and you could very shortly have no moving parts. So if you're in the left-hand lane on a highway or something, quickly get off the highway, be as safe as possible, find a safe place to pull over and turn the engine off as quick as you can so you don't do any damping. Now, beyond that, there's a, a bunch of other warning lights. You should familiar, familiarize yourself with them. There aren't really too many other than that that would require you to immediately get off the road or stop the car. But one of the lights that you probably have, all have seen is a check engine light. And uh, that could be a, a little icon that says service engine soon, might say check engine, or sometimes there's a little symbol and it actually looks like the outline of a state, but it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be an engine, okay? And uh, when that light comes on, the good news is there's not too many things that are gonna um, be really detrimental to the car in a short period of time. Uh, if there is, the computers are pretty smart and that car can go into some type of fail safe mode. So if you're driving down the road, check engine light comes on, ask yourself, does everything seem okay? Is there any problems? Does the car still have good power? Uh, look at your dashboard, check all your gauges, make sure there's no other lights on. If everything looks good, most likely you need to schedule an appointment, go see your mechanic, uh, get that car checked. When that light comes on, it stores a code in the computer. Uh, there's tons of codes. There's a lot of different things that could go wrong. Stores a code in the computer and that gives the mechanic an idea of which direction to look in to solve your problem. One particular thing that does happen though that I'd like to make you aware of uh, that's pretty common is that if you don't tighten your gas cap, you'll actually get a code because the car has a system that sort of checks just about every time you fill your tank, it goes through a set of things called drive cycles. And one of the things it checks is that it can draw a vacuum on the fuel tank so that there's no, uh, there's no fumes exiting the car. But if the gas cap is not sealed, not put on right, you'll get a code. So if you get a light while you're driving down the road, the first question you should ask right after you've checked all your gauges and if the car is driving okay is, did I just get gas? And if you got gas within the last day or two, it might not be a bad idea to take your fuel cap or your fuel cap off. First, make sure it was tight, take it off, look at the seal. There's like a little rubber O-ring uh, on the filler neck. There's a little flat surface. Make sure all that's clean, put it back on. If you're lucky, that light will go off in, a, in probably in a day or two. So somewhere between the time maybe you made your appointment to get it checked and when you have to go, you might get lucky and the light will go off. The last thing I wanna show you, um, is that you can buy something like this. This is a little, it's called an OBD2 scanner. Um, it plugs into the diagnostic port of your car. It's underneath the dashboard. Uh, if you look right under the driver's dashboard, there'll be a place. Sometimes there's a little plastic cap you gotta pop off, but you'll be able to plug this in to the receptacle under your dash. And you can buy these uh, fairly inexpensively. Uh, this is a little more sophisticated. I can look at different um, functions while the car is running and things, but you can buy a very, very simple one. And all it does is plug in, you put in the year, make, model of your car, it scans for the codes and it'll display the codes on the screen. You write the codes down, you can go to Google, Google the codes with your make and model of your car, 
and it'll give you an idea what the problem is, okay? And one of the other really nice things is, is that you can, you can turn that light off on your dash with this too as well. So, um, you know, if it's not a problem, that's, if it's an intermittent problem, you can turn the, turn the light off and uh, be able to drive without an annoying light flashing in your face. Another thing is when you look at the codes, if there's a whole bunch of codes, don't be alarmed. Sometimes one problem could cause multiple uh, things to sort of show up as an alarm. You can buy a very simple one of these for probably under $30 or $40. So uh, it might save you one trip uh, to the mechanic and it'll pay for itself. So there you go. I hope those tips helped. And uh, my email is WJM2. And if you have any questions, give me a holler. Thanks. Bye.